Do you know who the best starter is? Well, you're wrong. It's not Charizard. <clears throat> Sadly. I'm ChaosMan006, and in today's video we will be discussing who you should pick to be your partner, your ace, your best friend as you journey through the world of Pokemon. To start off this video, we must lay some ground rules. Number one, our only main story games will be analyzed. I am excluding Pokemon Green version because it is only re released in Japan. I do not have a way to get the game, and I do not understand Japanese, so I would not be able to play it. I doubt this would change too much in this list regarding if Green was added or not. Number two, Pokemon will only be judged in regions where they are the starter Pokemon. The exception to this is the Kanto starters, since they are practically the second starter in the Kalos region. Again, adding this or not will most likely not change this list too much. Number three, Pokemon will be judged as if they are the only member of a team, meaning they will have to fight every battle for you, but will have the even leveling with your opponents. Move sets, generation mechanics such as the physical special split in generation four, and stats will all contribute to the scoring. Number four, mega evolutions will not be taken into account due to every starter not having a mega form. Number five, no hidden abilities will be included. I'm looking at you, Greninja. Number six, Pokemon will be rated on a scale of one to five. One being the worst and five being the best. I am borrowing the system from others who have had success while using it, so I thank you to those people. I will reveal the best starter for each generation, but I also will discuss how the starters stack up with a list from least to greatest. With all that being said, let's get into the Kanto region. Many of you most likely thought that Kanto actually has four starters. You have Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and Pikachu. Pikachu joins the traditional starters since it was the only starter in Pokemon Yellow version. The other Kanto starters will not be able to be judged in Pokemon Yellow until they are obtainable. Pikachu also is the only counted as a starter in Pokemon Yellow, so even so, you can catch a Pikachu early in many journeys, it will not count as a starter in those games. The other three are also used in X and Y, but this is after the first gym, but since they are the, essentially the second starter, they will count as starters for those games also. After distributing the points, the best starter for Generation 1 is Blastoise. Wait, hold on, let me check the math. Charizard has to be the best. Well, it does have a pretty bad typing. Fine. Blastoise is the best starter for Generation 1, even if Charizard is my favorite. Blastoise begins very good as soon as you pick it. In Kanto, Brock and Giovanni and Team Rocket follow this monster. It also does the best against Blue and Lance if you give it an Ice type move. Blastoise only really struggles against Lieutenant Surge and Erika, but give it an Ice type move and the Erika problem isn't as bad. Blastoise also benefits from Pokemon Yellow, since it is not available until after the third gym, taking away its primary problem in Lieutenant Surge. It's not so good in Kalos because it's pretty neutral with all the gym leaders, but it really shines in battling Team Flare, the Elite Four, and Diantha, barely putting it above Charizard in the Kalos region. Its stats make it pretty bulky, which is good for a water type, but also it can hit hard specially, which takes advantage of its type and move pool. Now let's move on to Johto. Generation 2 looks at Johto and Kanto, being the only main series game to date that allows vid visitation to another region. Meganium, Typhlosion, and Feraliator will have a fun time taking on twice the number of gyms as regular starters. The best starter for Generation 2 is Feraligator. It's very neutral at the beginning, while as the other starters vary between good and very bad if you chose Chikorita. It struggles with Lieutenant Surge and Erika, which is no surprise since Blastoise also did, but also does poorly against Red. Its best asset is its move pool, allowing it to have super effective moves on Lance and Claire, which none of the other starters really have. Generation 3 probably boasts one of the hardest starter decisions. Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert are some of the most loved of all the starters, well, besides Charizard and Pikachu. But which is the best for Hoenn? Swampert does the best. Its dual typing really helps it out by taking away its greatest problem in Watson and making it its strongest asset. Swampert really doesn't struggle much unless it's facing a grass or ice type. Glacia is probably its toughest opponent. It excels over most gym leaders, Team Magma, and even does the best job on taking May and Brendan. Generation 4 is here and it brings a fun change to the gameplay in the physical special split, which really benefits many Pokemon. But 
how do the starters fare? Napoleon does the best based solely on move pool. Torterra can hold its own against Napoleon, ending up with similar effectiveness, but Torterra locks a move set to help it out. Napoleon's worst problem is Vulcan, but overall it's pretty neutral, making Piplup a very safe pick for the Sinnoh journey. Time for a weird generation that only allowed Pokemon of its own region for a while. Generation 5 is here and it's home to some of the most controversial Pokemon conversations. Conserving the tradition so far of the starters on this list, Samurott does the best in Unova. Despite the changes in the gym leaders from black and white to black and white too, Samurott crushes the gym leaders barring Elisa because she has electric types, and the first gym in black and white because, let's be honest, that gym is catered to be bad for you. But that problem is taken care of in black and white too. It also does the worst against Getsis and struggles with Team Plasma, but its utility in the gyms are just enough to make it the best. We make our way to Kalos in the third dimension. Mega evolutions are rampant, but sadly no Kalos starters have one. Despite not having a Mega, Greninja is the best for Kalos, but just barely. Its stats and move pull give it a slight advantage over Delphox. Greninja does terrible mid game at the fight. Ramos, Clement, and Valerie in a row. It also does the worst job against Trevor, but you barely have to battle him, so really it's not a big problem. Greninja does amazing in the league, which is enough to make it the best starter for the region. Time for a change as we approach Generation 7. Since the gyms are no longer around, Trials now take a lot of control of the points. Incineroar breaks the water type trend and makes its way to the top of the Alola region. While Pre-Marina is the best for Sun and Moon, Incineroar does way better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Incineroar succeeds due to a problem also being weak to it. Due to its diverse move pool, things that would give Incineroar a problem, like Totem Komoo, or Bomb Beat, Totem Araquanid, and Olivia can find themselves losing to this beast. The change in the water trial really works in its favor, and Pokemon like Hal, Kukui, and Gladian better run when they see you've chosen Litten as your starter. Now that we have the best starter for each region, we should look at how the starters compare to each other. This part of the video will be a list of 22 to 1 of who is the best starter overall. I will post the point total so you can see for yourself exactly how they stand up. Let's get started with number 22, Magani. You probably would have guessed it, but I'm here to confirm that Meganium is the worst starter. It struggles against everything in Johto, and really is only good against Brock and Misty and Kanto. It's easier to choose for Alligator, which doesn't nearly struggle as much, and also can take on Brock and Misty pretty well. Number 21, Superior. Lack of a moveset is the definition of this Pokemon. Sadly, the only good quality of Superior is if it has its contrary ability, and even with that, it's still not that good. It does its best job against Getsis, but it really only wants to match up against Clay. Most gym leaders can blow this thing back, but since it goes more neutral than Meganium, it takes a spot just higher. Number 20, Chestnut. If you haven't caught on, Grass types are pretty bad choices, and Chestnut is no exception. It does have a cool secondary typing, but when your best move is the defensive one, you have a hard time getting your job done. It does a good job against Seabold and Wickstrom, but that is countered by being bad against Caitlyn and Malva. Ultimately, you're better off getting one of the other starters and an electric tripe for Seabold. Number 19, Venusaur. Sadly, Venusaur doesn't do too well. A lot of people actually say that it's the best Kanto starter. But looking at the numbers, it's kind of hard to see that. Sure, it does do good early on with Brock and Misty, but that's about all. It could take on Giovanni, but Blastoise does that better since its typing doesn't inhibit it. Really, this thing is just good for countering Bruno's fighting types, and Koga, who does not like the poison typing of Venusaur. That is the only benefit from its dual typing, as it is now weak to Sabrina and ground types. Number 18, Sceptile. This is very disappointing to me, because I really like Sceptile. Sceptile begins strong taking out Roxanne, but it struggles until the last couple of gyms. It does the worst of the Hoenn starters when it comes to the rivals and champion, except when that champion is Wallace, but that's only in Pokemon Emerald. While it can take on Team Magma, the other starters 
don't really have to worry about them due to Blaziken's speed and fighting type and Swampert's double type advantage against most of Team Magabus Pokemon. Basically, the other two starters can do the set title's job way better. Number 17, Decidueye. You'd think by Generation 7, Game Freak would have realized how bad the grass starters are. Okay, Decidueye isn't terrible, but it is the worst in the Alola region. It struggles in most battles, but it can excel in some. However, one of the other starters can do its job too. It's good against Olivia, but Primarina does it better. It's good against Tapu, but Primarina does it better. It's good against Faba, but so is Incineroar. Let's just say that the Decidueye is overshadowed by the other starters. This starter is cool since it offers to change out its dual typing, but that's really the only reason to pick it. Well, besides its awesome design. Number 16, Charizard. Okay, can we go back to grass types? You're telling me Charizard is the worst fire type starter. But it looks the coolest. I mean, it's got two mega evolutions. Oh, wait, we didn't count those. Oh. Sadly, Charizard is pretty bad, and guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on Charizard. I mean, just look who my mascot is. Its dual typing really hurts it. It really sucks that the dragon typing was so OP in Generation 1, or we could have a really cool starter Pokemon. Charizard doesn't shine in Kanto unless you're battling Erika, and then the gym is way too easy. It does so much better in Kalos, helping out with Ramos, Wolfric, Wickstrom, Drasno when it has a Dragon type move or is holding Charizard right. X. It even does very well against the champion, Diantha. Sadly, Charizard just has too many weaknesses. Number 15, Pikachu. Hold on! How is Charizard worse than Pikachu? I mean, Pikachu is the starter for one game. Oh, that's right. Pikachu was only judged on Pokemon Yellow, so it has the fewest game of the starter Pokemon. Pikachu actually goes even with his game scoring a 3.0 average, meaning it is the most average of all the starters. Pikachu's best uses are against Misty and Lorelei, and actually does good against Lance. Just don't use it against Giovanni, because we all saw how hard it was for Ash to lose his Pikachu in the anime. Do you really want to lose yours too? Number 14, Embor. From here on out, the starters are all above average, but that doesn't explain why this thing looks so awful. Okay, we're focusing on stats, not design. That was another video. Check out the iCard. Actually, Embor would be so much better without its fighting type, <coughs> Team Freak, which makes it struggle against Skyla and Caitlyn. It does pretty good in the league if you ignore Caitlyn, but Ember makes her a trainer you can't sleep on. Bad jokes aside, Ember doesn't want to battle Clay, and especially not Marlin, who made an appearance in Black and White 2 as the 8th gym leader. Other than the late game setbacks, Ember strikes really hard in the early game, doing the best job with the starters taking on the first 4 gyms in Black and White and Black and White 2. It's a good go-to for serious rival battles in both games, and it does the best versus Getsis and Team Plasma. Wait, that's a lot of things it does well. How is it worse than Samurai? Number 13, Samurai. While it is true that Embor does a lot of things well, Samurai just barely outclasses Embor. Samurai is pretty neutral throughout most of the game, only really doing bad against Elisa, but it does what Embor cannot do, beat Clay, which gives it just enough of an edge over Embor. Number 13, Infernape. As we close off Unova, we finally open up Sinnoh on this list. Sadly, Infernape is the worst starter in Sinnoh, making it the worst starter that's not a grass type in a region. It really only struggles with Crash Awake, Bertha, and Lucian, but it goes mostly neutral with everything else. Its best quality is pounding that stupid rival of yours into the ground. Number 11, Typhlosion. Now, Typhlosion is a pretty safe route, only really having a problem with Misty and Brock since Giovanni isn't in the Johto games. It's probably your best bet against Whitney, Price, Jasmine, and Red, but also can do well against Lieutenant Surge and Koga if you give it ground type coverage. Number 10, Blaziken. Blazing its way into the top 10, we have everyone's favorite fire fighting chicken, Blaziken. Blaziken doesn't do too well against the gym leaders but it does the best for beating Norman, Sydney, Glacia, Steven, and Wally. 
The main setback for Blaziken is in Emerald, where you have to worry about two Water-type trainers instead of just one. It's also much more effective once it can take advantage of the physical special split after Generation 4. Number 9, Torterra. Weeding out the last grass starter, we have Torterra. Be honest, you picked this thing because it was a cute little turtle. But who ever thought you would train it into a giant continent? Torterra is a pretty hit or miss Pokemon depending on who you face. It does really good against Rourke, Crasher Wake, and Byron, but it's horrible against Candace, Aaron, Flint, and Barry. The move pull is lacking good useful moves, and that really separates it from being the best in the center region. Number 8. Empoleon. I wasn't lying about Torterra, it's pretty good, but I give just a slight edge to Empoleon. Empoleon is pretty neutral except when fighting its weaknesses in Gardenia and Volkner, or when it plays to its strength against Rourke and Bertha. Number 7, Delphox. How is this thing so high on this list? Actually, Delphox does pretty good against the gym leaders, and really only struggles with Serena and Seabolt. It's probably your best bet versus gym leaders that have not real good advantage over any of the starters, or not weak to any new starters. But then, how is it lower than Greninja? Number 6, Greninja. This is how. Greninja only struggles mid-game with Ramos, Clement, and Valerie. It also does bad against Trevor, which you don't see much of. The rest of the time, Greninja is kicking booty with its great move pull and stats giving just a slight edge over Delphox for best Kalos starter. Number 5, Feraligator. Biting and scratching its way into the top 5 is Feraligator. Despite Game Freak giving it too many letters in its name, Feraligator wrecks the place. Feraligator destroys Johto since nothing is strong against it, and it really only suffers versus Lieutenant Surge, Erika, and Red. Its move pull allows it to be viable against Lance and Claire, even though it's more of a physical attacker in Generation 2, even though it's a water type. Number 4, Primarina. Sometimes I hate how good this thing is, but its typing is really something. It plows through Sun and Moon only really being hindered by Totem Lorantis and Vigavolt, but the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon storyline changes, so does the tide for Primarina's usability. New battles not in Sun and Moon have done nothing but hurt Primarina's chances of being the best starter in Alola. Number 3, Incineroar. Yes, Ultra Sun and Moon really gave Incineroar an advantage. It has some struggles, but running through most of the trials in Elite Four with a wide move pull really gave this Pokemon an edge, even if it is kind of slow. Number two, Swampert. This Pokemon one is probably the easiest starter to talk about, since it's not really weak to anything in its games. Glacia probably gives it the hardest freezing this Pokemon, but other than that, it's very good. Its ground typing gives it a big boost, nullifying Watson completely. However, there is one starter that is better than Swampert. Number one, Charizard. I mean, I mean Blastoise. Sorry. Despite my personal feelings, Blastoise statistically is the best overall starter. Being weak to Lieutenant Surge, Ramos, Clement, and Erica, this monster doesn't really have a problem rampaging through Kanto and Kalos. Blastoise is more beneficial in Kanto, but can prove pretty viable in Kalos. It seems like it was made to destroy Team Flare, and it's your best bet for sweeping the league. Its bulk and move pool prove a devastating demise for those who choose to oppose it. Well everyone, there you have it. Those are how the stars match up with effectiveness in their own regions. I'm apologizing so bad because you guys have to be disappointed with Charizard just like I am. But I am a guy who goes by the numbers, so I really can't do anything about it. If you disagree with something in this video, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But remember, this is ultimately my opinion and should not be taken as absolute fact. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as it helps me know what kind of content I should produce. I put a lot of time into this video, so I really hope you did enjoy it. Also, subscribe to the channel for a variety of Pokemon, Legend of Zelda, Sonic, and other games. With all that being said, I'm Chaos May, 006, signing off. Burn it up.